Did you know that Jesus said you can't serve God and there's one other God that competes with God? Do you know who it is? He said you can't serve both God and mammon, which literally means money. In the parable of the sower that was planting the seed, did you know that one of the last things that killed the seed and stopped it from producing, he said that it fell amongst ground with thorns in it. He said those represent the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. Well, today I'm going to speak about a man, because we're in a series called Evil Men from the Bible. I'm going to speak about a man named Balaam. And this man Balaam was offered lots of money if he would just stop following the Lord. So I want to ask you a question. Are you rejecting God and are you chasing money? Because there's only one other God in scripture that says that competes for your heart. And that's Mammon, the God of money. And there's one thing that can stop you from being fruitful in the kingdom of God. And that's the love of money, the deceitfulness of riches. So let's talk about this man, Balaam. This is day two of evil men in the Bible. Yesterday, I made a video speaking about Cain. You can go watch that video if you want. But today, I want to speak to you about Balaam. Now, let me tell you something about Balaam. Balaam was an anointed man of God. He was called by the Lord. How or when? I don't know. But scripture tells us that at the same time when Moses was taking the people of Israel out of Egypt, out of their slavery, scripture tells us that at the same exact time, Balaam was a man of God, he was a prophet. And scripture says that whoever Balaam would curse would be cursed. And scripture says that whoever Balaam would bless, he would be blessed. So God had given Balaam an extreme anointing. But I want to read you something from the Hall of Shame. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the Hall of Faith. But I want to read you something from the Hall of Shame found here in Jude chapter 1 verse 11. It's going to mention Cain. That's why I made the video of Cain yesterday. But then it's also going to mention Balaam. And look what it says about Balaam in Jude chapter 1 verse 11, speaking about false prophets. Look what it says. Pay attention. Woe to them for they walk in the way of Cain. And I explained what that was in yesterday's video. And abandon themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error. So what did they do? They abandoned themselves. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. I want you to imagine that Balaam already had something in his hands. He was already holding something. What was he holding? He was holding the anointing of God. He was holding the gift of God. But then, let me tell you the situation. There was a king called Balak. And this man Balak, with a K, this man Balak hated Moses, hated the people of God. So he called Balaam the prophet. And he said, Balaam, I know that whoever you bless will be blessed. And I know that whoever you curse will be cursed. He said, Balaam, please curse these people for me because they are great people and I don't want them to overpower me. Balak was scared of the people of God who were going to the promised land. But Balaam said, I can't curse them. God hasn't told me to curse them. I can't do anything that God has not told me to do. And then Balak told him, Balak, if you curse them, I'll make you the richest man you could ever imagine. He says, I'll give you all the gold and the silver and the jewels you want. Balaam said this, even if you were to give me the world full of money, I still wouldn't be able to do something God hasn't told me to do. But this is the deceitfulness of riches. At first, Balaam answered correctly. And at first, Balaam was walking in the correct way. But I want to tell you something. Let's learn from Balaam. When you hang around bad company, it's going to ruin good morals. Scripture says if you want to become a fool, hang around fools. If you want to become wise, hang around wise people. Why am I saying this? Because at first, when Balak offered Balaam all that money, Balaam turned it down. But he kept company with Balak too long. Scripture tells us to flee from our lustful desires, from our worldly temptations. He told Timothy, the apostle Paul in the book of Timothy, he said, Timothy, flee from your youthful lust, from your youthful desires. You don't stay there and you conversate with it. You don't stay there and you analyze it. Whenever something is bringing temptation to your life, whenever something is trying to draw you away from the things of God, you don't stay there and have a dialogue with it. You remove yourself from it. Balaam was being spoken to by Balak and Balak was trying to influence him to do something that went against the Lord. Balaam's first mistake, and we can learn from this, Balaam's first mistake was that he was associating with the things of the world. And at first, he stood firm in foundation. <clears throat> but then later on, man, that money started looking real good. At first, he was being faithful to God. But then that money kept looking very interesting. Look what God told Balaam. God told Balaam, Balaam, whoever I bless, and this is the scripture that you've probably heard. He said, Balaam, whoever I bless cannot be cursed. You cannot curse someone that I have blessed. 
So Balaam tells Balak the king, look, I, sp I spoke to God. He told me I couldn't curse them. Balak said, please, please. He said, I'll double it. I'll give you even more money. I'll double it. I'll triple it. I'll quadruple it. Just curse them for me. And you know what Balaam did? He said, okay, let me go ask God again. Let me go pray. Maybe God will tell me something different. <laughs> let me tell you something. God's word is God's word. He has told us to, to leave the things of the flesh, and he has told us to walk in the spirit. He has told us to be humble. He has told us not to be prideful. These are just some examples. God's word is not going to change. It doesn't matter how much money. It doesn't matter how much treasures. It doesn't matter how many riches we might offer to the things of God. God is never going to change. God does not take bribes. He wants your heart. He doesn't want your money. He is the owner of the gold. He is the owner of the silver. He is the owner of the jewels. He is the one that created this world. God doesn't want your money. And believe me, the most important thing for your life is not money. Money is always devaluating. The economy is always fluctuating. I mean, things are always changing. What God wants for you is true riches. And true riches is a spirit. Now you may say, but don't I need money? Yes, of course. God's going to supply you with money. Scripture says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness. Everything else shall be handed over to you. Scripture says God knows you need food. Scripture says God knows you need clothes. And Scripture says God knows you need shelter. He's going to give you food. He's going to give you clothes. And he's going to give you a place to live. And not only that, but if you have children, he's also going to take care of your family. Believe me, Scripture says that he is a good father. It says, which one of you being sinful people, when your son asks you for an egg, you don't give him a scorpion? Or when your son asks you for a fish, you don't give him a snake? Or when he asks you for bread, you don't give him a rock? Scripture says, how much more won't your heavenly father give you what you need? Your father's going to supply your needs. I want to let you know that God is going to supply all your needs. And in many cases, he's even going to surpass what you ever even imagined. And how does this happen? When we seek his kingdom, when we seek his riches. But Balaam was a man that took his eyes off of what the Lord was giving him, and he put his eyes on the things of the flesh. Can I tell you something? Don't be like Balaam, because let me open your eyes a little bit. If the devil, check this out, if the devil is offering you so much, if the devil is offering you things to leave the things of God, if he's trying to rob your attention away from the things of God, if the devil is offering you so many things, why would he do that? Why would the devil offer you so much? Maybe it's because he knows that God has much more for you, but he's trying to rob those blessings from your life. I want to tell you that God had so many things for Balaam, but Balaam listened to, to the voice of Balak. And he went up to one mountain and God told him the same thing. No, they're blessed. They cannot be cursed. He went up to another mountain. God told him, no, they're blessed. They cannot be cursed. He went up to another mountain. Maybe God will hear me from this mountain. Have you ever seen those commercials? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Balaam was the original one. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And he was going from mountain to mountain to mountain, praying, seeing if God would change his mind. And God said, look, I'm not going to change my mind. They are blessed and cannot be cursed. But what happened? Balaam. Because he was associating with bad company, because he was hanging around the things of the world, his heart began to change. And if you can even put it like this, he started getting not godly vision, but he started getting money vision. The company you keep, the friends you have, the associations that you are with, whether you like this or not, they will influence your life. So Balaam let himself be influenced because he was around the temptation that the devil was offering him. Is this evil? Is this money evil? No, this money's not evil. You know what is evil? Scripture says the love of money. That's what Paul told Timothy. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And because people have chased it, they have pierced themselves with many sorrows. God has called you. God has great things for you. But believe me when I say that the blessings that God wants for your life are the spiritual blessings. He wants your inward person to be blessed. And everything else, he's going to supply it. That's what scripture tells me, and I believe it. God has always supplied my needs, and I believe that God is always going to supply your needs. But what does he want from us? He wants us to see him as a treasure. He wants us to value his presence, to treasure his presence. So I want to ask you, what do you treasure? Well, let's go back to Balaam. Balaam, he finally couldn't handle it no more. God kept telling him no. 
that their blessing cannot be cursed. But at the same time, Balak was offering him all this money and he really wanted it. He says, but I can't get it because I can't curse him. And you know what he did? Do you know what this rascal did? He schemed. And he told Balak this. He said, look, I can't curse them. But if you pay me, I can tell you how they can curse themselves. I can't curse them. But I can tell you how they can bring a curse upon themselves. And Balak said, bet. I'll pay you. I'll give you the money. Tell me how they can curse themselves and I'll give you the money. And do you know what this dude did? Let me tell you. He told Balak this. He said, look, God has told them not to get involved with the women of other nations. Because he told them that if they get involved with the women of other nations, those women are going to turn their hearts away from God. And then they're going to curse themselves. And I want to show you something. Pay attention. This is very important. Look what money's always involved with. He said, look. He said, have a big party. Have a bunch of alcohol and strong drink. And invite all the women from all the other parts. He says, and when they get drunk, they're going to intermingle. And they're going to sin against the Lord. And God's going to curse them. They're going to bring a curse upon themselves because they're disobeying God. Alcohol, money, and sex involved with each other. When the devil can get you to start loving the things of this world, when the devil can start making you chase the treasures and the riches of this world, sin ain't too far away. Sin ain't too far away. There's been people, stories that I know of, of people who start loving money so much and it separates them from their marriage, separates them from their family, separates them from their faith. That's why scripture says that the love of money is the root of all types of evil. That because people have wanted to become rich, they make that their goal, they wanted to become rich, they pierce themselves with many sorrows. There's a lot of people that focus so much on becoming millionaires and they lost their marriage, lost their children, lost their health in many cases because their ambition, their goal was the treasures of this world, the riches of this world. But look what scripture says about Balaam. Balaam didn't overcome. Did some of the people curse themselves? Yes, they did. They listened to the invitation. I'm telling you, listening to the invitation of the ways of the world, listening to the invitation of rejecting God, is not going to bring anything good. And the Lord wants you to treasure him. The Lord wants you to continue to walk by faith. Focus on the Lord. Do what you got to do. Work hard. Work, work with your good efforts. Be diligent. Be faithful. Be loyal. Uh, the scripture says that God will bless the work of your hands. That's what the word says. God has nothing against people making money. God has nothing against people starting businesses or investing. God has nothing against people doing those things. Nothing, nothing. It says that he'll bless the work of your hands. But when people start focusing on this, and start making this their hope, and start making this their treasure and their ambition, God's like, hey, I'm your treasure. Your inheritance comes from me. That's just a piece of paper that can fluctuate. I'm the one that's going to really take care of you. That's the trouble. That's the problem. That's the error. But Balaam didn't overcome and Balaam didn't succeed. You know what happened to Balaam? He died. Because scripture says that the price of sin is death. He died. And he didn't even get to enjoy none of the money. And he died. You know why he died? Because there was a battle. And Balaam was caught in the middle of the battle. And he was killed in battle. Look what scripture says about Balaam here. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14 through 16. It speaks about people in the last days and false prophets in the last days. And look at some of their traits. 2 Peter 2, 14 through 16. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accursed children, forsaking the right way. Who is the right way? Jesus. Living the life of faith. Forsaking the right way. In other words, abandoning, leaving the right way. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing. God doesn't have anything against you gaining something from doing right or from working diligently or from being faithful and loyal or from starting a business or, or, or from just being faithful at what you do. Scripture says that a man who is skillful at his, at his craft will stand in the presence of kings. He will not stand in obscurity. In other words, when you're good at what you do and when you're diligent at what you do, man, God will bless you and God will give you success. The scripture says that Balaam loved gain from wrongdoing, from going against the things of God. 
So I want to tell you, this evil man from the Bible, day two of evil men from the Bible, Balaam. What can we learn from him so that we won't be like him? First of all, he was having bad company. And bad company ruins good morals. Second of all, he was around the temptation when he should have been walking away from that temptation. And third, he figured out a way how to get what he wanted without disobeying God. He schemed the way. I can't curse them, but I can tell you how they can curse themselves. And he listened to the voice of Balak instead of listening to the voice of God. I want to ask you a question today. Whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, or are you trusting in the Lord? Because scripture says if you seek first his kingdom and all its righteousness, everything else will be handed over to you. I want to let you know that you have a blessing in Jesus Christ. First of all, he will make you inwardly rich with his presence, with his joy, with his peace. And second, scripture says that he takes care of the sparrows. And if he takes care of the sparrows, and if he dresses the flowers so beautifully, scripture says that he's taking care of you. And he's going to dress you and he's going to give you shelter also. That's what the scripture teaches us. That's what Jesus said. And I 100% believe it. Trust the Lord. Don't trust in the riches of this world. Keep serving God. He's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory. Do everything as unto the Lord. Seek first his kingdom and everything else will be handed over to you. Keep working faithfully. Keep being diligent. And God's going to take care of all your needs. Who do you love? Do you love God or do you love money? God bless you. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Like I said, this is day two of Evil Men from the Bible. Yesterday was Cain. Today's Balaam. Tomorrow I have another man you probably never heard about. So make sure you turn on your notifications and subscribe if you're not so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so in one of two ways. The first way looks something like this. It's called Super Thanks. It's a feature at the bottom of your screen. Super Thanks are a feature that YouTube provides for your creators in case the viewers want to show their appreciation they can do so through that feature that youtube provides it's called super thanks or when you try to leave a comment it pops up in the corner of the comment box super thanks are always a great blessing to my life they're always greatly appreciated another way you can show your appreciation the link is in my description is called channel memberships channel memberships is a monthly way that you can show your appreciation it's five dollars a month about a dollar twenty twenty five a week it's also a feature that youtube provides for creators and in return you get special badges special stickers and access to archive lives that are archived only for channel members if that's something you're interested in click the link in my description channel memberships are also a great blessing to my life and do me a favor before you click off this video make sure you watch one of these videos that are popping up on your screen i hope and i pray that they will continue to be a great blessing to your life god bless you